but it is a neo vedic tradition because shankara and ramanuja both of them could well understand that indian tradition should not give the entire emphasis on rituals there should be a dominant culture of knowledge argumentative interactive analytical knowledge but at the same time they, they also understood the common mass need some practical approaches in their life in their social life when they face these social problems when they face some difficulties some constraints in their individual life what they should do what would you say it shunya is the ultimate reality and nirvana is the ultimate goal shankara told it is only brahma just he as if he replaced the world taking the upanishadic ideas it was not his novel ideas it was it was there in upanishads he only interpreted it for common mass and you are shankara who could drag these upanishads from the himalayan caves for the entire country and you are shankara who for the first time in indian history could identify the indianness in its in its first sense of the indian tradition this indianness shankara established in both ways one in cultivating the upanishadic knowledge which straightway declares the oneness the one unity of the entire creation ekam sat but at the same time in realistic world it is plural bahu bahu bhav badan the ultimate goal is to realize this unity not only in the universe but in an individual so this is the this is the indianness that sang shankara could decipher for the first time in indian history where india india declares announces that yes each individual has the same potential divinity later swami ji spoke it in a more, more lucid way the aim is to manifest it it was there in the upanishads shankara could identify that this is the indian nest based on which the indian culture started its journey from the pre vedic and vedic period and based on which the indian tradition indian culture should continue its journey but at the same time he understood that this is this 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 may listen something abstract the common mass despite i identifying this abstract philosophy 
requires to have some practical some practical application so he introduced he established monasteries in four corners of this country see how peculiar how interesting it is he could identify the, the geographical boundary of this country for the first time in indian history based on this monastery indian society will try to build up he did not part away with all the vedic rituals but at the same time it minimized all those things so this is another paradigm shift in indian culture but still what shankara introduced as a shankara introduced as a practical demonstration we saw in ramanuja and in later time in the second millennium of indian history we found in bhakti movement sometimes we think that shankara was only a knowledge seeker whatever he, he did it was only knowledge epistemological something nyaya vedanta everything no he had a prayerful mind he knew that for the for the practical purpose people in their social life in their cultural life in their individual life need this typical prayerful approach singing hymns so wonderful hymns he composed the world is still the world is still waiting to find out the depth of the hymns shankara composed indian history one day will be able to find out the second millennium bhakti movement had its deep root in those prayerful hymns uh, the second millennium bhakti school bhakti movement was another unique addition to indian treasure house what was this addition this was the addition where we found that common mass movement started based on this bhakti movement bhakti culture we go to the western world western india gujarat narasimha mehta you come to eastern india chaitanya mahaprabhu so many came the we dadu ravi das so many so many during this period and they could create a mass movement and naturally this was a great addition which still in india is being nurtured by different sections of people in different ways you may think that i am only speaking of the spiritual tradition no what do i mean to say that this spiritual tradition the spiritual culture was a unifying one in indian tradition yes in that indian tradition we saw charvakas who could debate who could refute who could reject the ideas of other indian schools of philosophy so called theist school of philosophy there was a, there were ajivikas 
But this spiritual unifying culture of Indian heritage did not exclude the Charvakas, nor they exclude the Ajivikas. Everyone was accepted. This is the spiritual unifying cultural movement that India has been able to initiate right from his pre-Vedic age. Innumerable invasions Indian history witnessed. A Western historian has told thus that India is nothing but an ethnological museum in which numberless races of mankind, ranging from savages of lower, lower degree to polished philosophers, have got sheltered. Yes, this is because this Indian spiritual unifying cultural movement that India introduced right from its pre vedic age. Along with that, there was production of literary creations. The Vedic literature itself gave us very rich literary treasure. Even if we read the Upanishadic hymns, the Nasadiya Shukta, we are dumbfounded to see how beautifully they could portray the nature which they witnessed. Beyond the nature, how beautifully they could portray the beauty of nature. How beautifully they could portray the fearful approach of the nature. In Greek philosophy, in Greek literature, nature has been painted in two ways, as benigna and as maligna. Beautiful and terrifying. In Indian Vedic literature also, we have found, they have portrayed the nature. They started from this soil of the earth, but when, while creating literature, they could reach beyond the azure world as appeared in front of them. They could overcome the barrier of time and space, the sublimity of which the literature speaks till that was the invention of our Vedic rishis. Natatra Suryo Bhati Na Chandra Tarakam Nema Vidyuto Bhanti Kutoya Vagnihi Tameva Bhantam Manuhati Sarvam Tasya Bhasa Sarvamidam Vipati What a unique creation! What a sublime creation it is. The world poetry is still waiting to touch this sublimity. Not only in Vedic age, in the later days, we have found so many writers came. We have found people like Kalidasa in later age. So many and so many they are in the line. In Avidhyana Shakuntalam, in Meghadutam, in Vana's creations, Vanavatta's creation, is Vasha's creation, in Shudraka's creation, what we saw? Our society, our tradition, our imagination, and all these different apparently opposite, contradictory 
societal pictures could could have been portrayed by the by our poets by our writers and do the, all these things were appreciated through the passage of the age why because we had this unifying cultural movement spiritual spiritually unifying cultural movement that is the movement which gave the message to the world that we don't discard anything swami ji in his swami vivekananda in his first lecture in the in the famous chicago address pointed out this phenomenal characteristic of indian tradition and he recited a unique passage a couplet from the shiva mahimna stotra ruchi nam vai chitra rajju kutila nana pakaju sham nrinami ko gamya stamasi payasam arna bandha this is not only true in the case of spiritual seekers this is true for the all facets of indian life and that is the heritage we are now inheriting with us that is the culture the flag of which we are bound to bear carry with us but at the same time it is true that from the 18th century indian culture and heritage saw another paradigm shift where european culture came to us as you know the famous lines composed by rabindranath tar pare shunno holo jhanjhar khutto nibir nishite dilli rajashala eke eke likokkhe kokkhe lagilo mishite dipalo komala shobolukkh gritro der urthoshor bibhotsho chitkare mogol mohima rochilo shashan shojja mushti meho bhasho rekhakare holo tar shima ebong tar pare boniker man dondo shobbori pohanor pare dekha dilo raj dondo te this is another significant transformation in indian cultural tradition that we witnessed european movement came that was the renaissance movement which cropped up in european soil and through their machinery the machinery of church the machinery of the king the machinery of the church and the machinery of the administration the machinery of the padris and the machinery of the kings the europeans preached that the renaissance movement that took that brought with them three cardinal messages one rationalism two individualism three humanism and these three cardinal messages which india saw right from the beginning of the 18th century and throughout the 19th century and also in the first half first one or two decades in 20th century was something unique to them because this was the this was the culture this was the movement which brought with them a new religion which straight away told that our ancient scriptures are something imaginary baseless 
has no logic, has no depth. And in the second approach, which told the Indian culture that you don't don't need to believe in something, Atman, Brahman, God, no. And with their power, monetary power, administrative power, they went on pressing these two significant messages that we should accept. We should forget our ancestry. We should forget our history. We should build up new tradition. You know the 19th century is free. I will not go in detail. But really, different parts of the country were bewildered what they should do, how they should accept this new one. Should they totally reject or they should they partially accept or there should be a blending. Ramakrishna Vivekananda, two great advents Indian history of 19th century witnessed. Along with, there were several ones Vidya Shagar, Ram Mohan, Vidya Shagar, Bonkim Chandra. Spe another speciality with Tagore's culture, Rabindranath, the culmination we saw. And Indian culture could start its combat. They could make this neo-European movement understand that new Indian culture, new Indian heritage will surely be born, will surely be built up, but that will never discard thousands of years of Indian cultural tradition, that spiritual, spiritually unifying cultural movement that will never, never forfeit, that will never part away with. Although this new Indian cultural movement proved that they have sufficient liberal mind set up to accept whatever is good in Western world. They will accept the things, their science and technology. But at the same time, they will not leave a single inch of a, a single inch, a single room, a single space for the Westerners. That was really an important, a matchless battle that Indian history could witness. Blessed are those who could see Professor Shuniti Chattopadhyay. I think one of this person who could see this, who could understand this battle. And so he could write the essence of Indian culture in some of his unique essays. Thus, Indian culture and Heritage is going on. Now, at the end, I will try to list out once again that what then we have found in this long journey of Indian heritage as the basic tenets that we need to nurture till date, still today, but maybe this fundamental features. One, search for knowledge right from the 
pre-Vedic age till date. This is the Indian culture that we have never refrained. We have never abstained from this from the, from the quest for the knowledge. Whatever knowledge it may be. In our ancient age, there was the search for Brahman. There was the search for the existence of zero. zero. Sadeva samma idam agrasit. Asadeva samma idam agrasit. Both these views were there. Buddha told that shunyam adha adhyatmikam drishtva shunyam drishtva tu bhaiyata. And Gaurapada told tatvam drishtva tu tatvam adhyatmikam drishtva tatvam drishtva tu bhaiyata. The fullness and the zero. Whatever it may be, the quest for knowledge was there, has been there, is still there. Till today, we are seeing in our independent India, we have seen we have seen Professor J. C. Bosch, Prafulla Chandraya, and different other scientists. Great writers like Rabindranath Tagore, Subramanya Bharati, how they dedicated their life in search for knowledge to a contemplative versus argumentative approaches of life. Indian cultural tradition could build up this apparently paradoxical approaches of life. At one side, contemplative, at another side, argumentative. Yes, when I am a sage trying to realize the so, so this own, the inner, inner self, I am contemplating. But when I am trying to analyze the truth, I'm using the very crude, hair-splitting arguments we are deploying. The, the students of Indian philosophers who have read Khandana Khanda Khadi of Harsha, the Nagarjuna's philosophical treatise, are the witness how Indian argumentative mind was developed. One side, they are so much keen for contemplation. Another side, they are ready for argumentation. Still today, same thing is going on. We have seen too so many monks, people of different works of life who are contemplating when they are trying to search the truth within themselves, but at the same time, when they are trying to analyze the truth, decipher the truth, unfold different aspects of the truth, unravel different mysteries of knowledge, they are putting their most difficult crude argumentations. Three, creating this unifying diversity, creating a unified diversity. Indian tradition has always accepted the diversity, but that diversity has never prompted us to discard anyone. That has not precluded anyone in our culture. This diversity has always a message with it. That despite diversity, we have one unifying truth. 
श्रृंगंतु विश्वे अमृत पुत्र आये धाम दिव्या तस्तु वेदाहमेत पुषं महांत आदित्य वर्ण तमस परस्ता तमेव विधि अति मृत्यु नान्य पंथा विद्यते अयना He had the courage to say that I have been able to realize the highest truth. You come, I will. I call you. You may test. You may experiment. You may be a, a non-believer. You may be a believer. You may be a skeptic. You may be a theist. you may have a scientific approach you may have a prayerful mind we accommodate you this diversity is not something alienated one this diversity is something which has within itself a perennial unifying message that will never perish in any time to come po welcoming the life enjoyments but journeying beyond hedonism never think that indian culture and tradition have rejected the enjoyments no see our sculptures see our paintings They have enjoyed the life. They are so much, so much joyous, seeing the different manifestations of nature, of 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 the of mother earth. They worship the tree. They worship the river. They composed hymns on rivers. Why? They enjoyed the flow, the music of the water flow. they enjoyed the color of the sky they enjoyed the play of the people so they could portray the things they enjoyed the life till that we are enjoying the life right from the pre vedic age till date it's indian culture but we have never thought that this life is only for consumerism is meant for any hedonism no our journey is with the life is from the life is with the life and ultimately beyond the life we love the life we go beyond the life we accept the life we go beyond the life we welcome the life we go beyond the life and that's the indian message to the world don't become afraid of death because it is nothing but another phase of life this is the enjoyment of life that indian culture and tradition has always been preaching for the world and last but not the least the spirituality the innermost truth the inner engineering that indian culture is always sharing with every one of the civilizations indian culture indian heritage never tells that even an ant is someone which is negligible no nothing is nonchalant to indian culture and tradition they believe even an ant even the even the smallest creature the most nonchalant creature of the world will evolve itself how through the manifestation of the spirituality in today's language inner engineering 
we should try to see our inner world we are always exposed to the great external world but we should never forget our internal world whatever is going on in our inner world we try to purify it. in the process of purification in the process of the search of the innermost real reality within our individual existence we will be able to evolve our self from the beastly creature to the manly one to the from the human creature to something sublime unmatched sublime that i will tell aham brahma asmi i am that supreme brahman this is the courageous statement straight forward bold statement that indian culture indian tradition indian heritage has told us to be taught and to teach indian heritage has preached the world to realize this to preach this. this is the spirituality this is the innerity that indian culture and tradition has always been preaching undoubtedly true 19th century 20th century the last part 20th century the last part of 20th century and this this part of the new millennium is witnessing different paradoxical metamorphosis metamorphosis in our lifestyle in our thinking process in our psyche in our interaction in our communication but at the same time it is true that history has proved none of these movements be it a sociological a scientific a psychological a literary a cultural whatever it may be none of these movements have ever been able to establish a peaceful a contemplative a serenity preaching world environment for the posterity no never there have been so many experiments with different social movements economic movements post modern movements but still we are in a fix still we are perplexed we are seeing the breakage in our family life we are seeing the split undesired split in our organizational life we are witnessing different confliction in our social life we are afraid and anguished to find out different state conflicts based on religion based on science based on sociology we have not been able to find out the way out the solution the solution is there in indian spirituality in indian tradition as vivekananda said it is indian tradition which will at the end will be able to rescue the individual will be able to deliver the deliverance for the entire humanity the mukti the ultimate mukti 
the ultimate peace that is the search of humanity till now who will give it this indian cultural tradition one which i have termed as spiritually unifying cultural movement and that is the legacy this india has given us that is the proper indianness which we will be able to build up once we are involved in this movement once we become flag bearers of this movement i fervently hope that the entire humanity in its future days will surely witness will surely come to have its serene shelter under the himalayas upon the ocean on the soil of our mother india thank you namaskar thank you maharaj ji we are uh, really enriched with your lecture and now i invite professor durga basu to preside over the meeting namaskar maharaj at the very outset i pay my heartfelt respect to all of you for your kind presence in this webinar and it's a great privilege to have with us maharaj uh, swami shastrakanand ji and he has delivered an excellent lecture on indian culture and heritage and truly speaking it is so mesmerizing that um, i don't want to say anything after hearing maharaj and it is very difficult for us to say uh, about indian culture and heritage so we are illuminated by his lecture and uh, i can express only our deepest respect and gratitude to maharaj for illuminating us in such a way that we can think over the entire subject it is really wonderful to see how maharaj has explained the whole gamut of indian culture heritage within a one hour and expressing all india's her own culture that is the material non material culture and i can say only that it is a journey maharaj rightly said that it is a journey right from our culture when it started 5000 years uh, back from the pre vedic age and to the 19th century so the journey it is simply not a journey but a pilgrimage so it is uh, so we are spell bound maharaj by uh, after hearing you we have nothing to say that only we can say that is the most fundamental element of indian culture is the issue of religion religious beliefs and its symbolic expression so through this journey you have explained wonderfully from the very beginning that vedic age to uh, from the vedic to the modern age and how you have shown us that paradigm shift of not only the religious beliefs it is not only the philosophical revival but at the same time it is a paradigm shift in our society culture and even in the different phases of political life so in one field in one journey maharaj has shown us how all this culture all these aspects of the basic aspects of culture uh, has been imbibed in in oneness that is the indianness so we are again grateful to maharaj ji 
for expressing all this culture and just we are just thinking over it and uh, frankly speaking i have no words to explain your and to uh, say uh, uh, any words about this indian culture i just want to think over it whatever you have said whatever you have uh, expressed through this uh, the material and non material aspects of indian life so my deepest respect to maharaj and all the listeners must best, best wishes to all the listeners and definitely we will again in future we will definitely invite maharaj for uh, illuminating us again again and again thank you maharaj namaskar thank you dudadi now i invite uh, okita boshu our treasure to uh, offer your both of you respected president professor durga basu vice president of kolkata society for asian studies our chief speaker swami shastragananda maharaj ji dr mohidash bhattacharya executive member of kolkata society for asian studies our friends well wishers members of kolkata society for asian studies and students it is my privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of kolkata society for asian studies for today's program covid-19 is a crisis for all of us we all have new normal life with a lot of challenges still there are some positivities in this situation under these circumstances I take this opportunity to extend our gratitude to our president Professor Durga Basu for sparing her valuable time to address the gathering as well as to preside over the event. It has been our pleasure to host Swami Shastragananda Maharaj ji for today's lecture. We are really very grateful to him for accepting our invitation to deliver lecture in lecture series of Shruti Chatterjee Memorial Lecture 7. our special thanks to dr mohidas bhattacharya for accepting our invitation of introducing today's speaker and even like this would not have been possible overnight it requires planning and team effort in this connection we are very much thankful to all our executive committee members for their continuous support and advice for successfully organizing the lecture our special thanks to tomogno rai state aided college teacher department of computer science shorojini naidu college of women for providing technical support to organize this event my thanks also go to all the people who have given their precious time in organizing this lecture in particular i would like to acknowledge and thanks dr shurmishta de basu secretary of kolkata society for asian studies for being the convener of the program i cannot thank everyone enough for the involvement they have shown and the willingness they have expressed to take on the completion of this task beyond their comfort zones finally thanks to all distinguished members of the audience for their virtual presence at this function thank you namaskar महाराजुलउंड আমি মানে এখন আমার কোনো কথাই বলতে ইচ্ছে করে মনে হচ্ছে আপনার এই কথাগুলো আমরা শুনি डेफिनेटলি উই উইল পাবলিশ ইওর লেকচার डेफिनेटলি এন্ড উই উইল এক্সপেক্ট দ্যাট ইউ উইল গিভ আস দ্য রাইট আপ অন দ্যাট পার্টিকুলার সাবজেক্ট সো দ্যাট উই ক্যান পাবলিশ ইট ওকে মহারাজ মেনি মেনি থ্যাঙ্কস এন্ড প্রণাম মহারাজ প্রণাম মহারাজ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ নমস্কার 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 So we take you. Okay. Okay. So.